Time now for Sage Money Radio with your host, Hollis Tay Jr. on WJBO News Radio. Call 202 Sage. That's 202 7243 to learn what Sage investors are doing to ensure they never lose another penny due to stock market risk. Sage Money Radio, where your investment has a clear exit strategy. And now, your host, Hollis Tay Jr. Good afternoon and welcome to Sage Money Radio. Little Hank Jr. there. I think I'm going to keep that as my new intro song. Makes you want to get in a tree and hunt some deer. Look, lots of things going on in our society, lots of things going on in our economy, and I want to talk to you about some of those things, and I want to share with you some of the ideas and principles that I'm applying to my life. And, you know, with with the Internet, mostly, there's so many resources and so many places to get information. And you have to realize and trust where you're getting your information from. And fortunately for me, I have aligned myself with some people across the country where I get a lot of my information, not all of it, but a lot. And I am really consumed myself with the tax code. And a lot of people are paying unnecessary taxes. Now, if you are investing in that 401k, you are kicking that can down the road. You have to know that. You have to understand that. And you are in a partnership with the federal government. And that's a partnership that I don't want to be in. That is a partnership that I do not want to be in with the federal government. And who in the heck wants to be in a partnership with the federal government? So right now, I have a colleague of mine on the phone line, Mr. Barry Page. Barry, good afternoon and welcome to Sage Money Radio. Hey, Hollis. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, For you listeners in Baton Rouge, Barry is a registered financial consultant. He is, um, he, his specialty is showing families and business owners how to use their life insurance while they're alive for financing to increase cash flow. And Barry graduated from William Carey College in Hattiesburg, and he loves mountain bike riding. I've known that. I've been with Barry at a couple meetings, and he's an, an avid outdoors when it comes to riding that bike. And he has three children, and he calls Ocean Springs your home, right, Barry? Or Yeah, that's it. So, the um, Gulf Coast. Yeah, the, the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. So, Barry, uh, I'm glad you joined us today, and... You know, we're going to talk about some issues here that I just don't think most people are having the conversations that you and I have with our clients or potential clients. And, um, you know, one of them deals with, I guess the slang term is private banking. But first, tell our listeners and batteries, Barry, a little bit about yourself and how long you've been in the industry and what got you in the industry. Sure. Um, Well, I've uh, been in this line of business for about 13 years. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur um, pretty much by nature. I've um, started my own business. Uh, Actually, I started throwing newspapers at 10, but uh, really my first official business was at 19. And uh, so uh, for the past, you know, 30-plus years, uh, I've been creating and and building businesses. And really what got me in this industry – was uh, I read quite a few books in college um, uh, about uh, the life insurance industry, um, and then I was affected by um, many things. Um, My dad was in a car wreck, and my my sister was killed in a car wreck. Uh, My dad was disabled, and I eventually died. But um, so that uh, when I sold one of my businesses, I was living in Nashville, moved back to uh, the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I had to decide what I wanted to do, and had learned uh, you know, quite a bit about life insurance, and, um, or I thought I had anyway, and um, mm-hmm. felt like that would be a noble profession, so I started a business, an agency, and I was uh, fortunate enough right when I got into the business uh, back in um, probably 2003, 2004, um, 
I met a gentleman, Nelson Nash, um, who is the author of the book Becoming Your Own Banker. And um, so very fortunate to meet him, and uh, um, it just really changed my life, the perspective that uh, I now have on finance and, um, you know, life insurance in general. Uh, There's a lot of misinformation out there, and um, really the biggest part of what I do is just educate people on what's really going on with their money. Yes, and you know Barry and I are affiliated with a group of people, and we talk about the taxes and the tax code a lot. Um, Barry, why would someone, you know, if someone's listening right now, uh, why would someone be interested, or why? I mean, besides the fact that you and I eat our home cooking, we're doing what we talk about. Why would someone want to do this? You know, we talk about families and business owners. Why would somebody want to do what we're doing with their own money? Well, the first thing um, that I always say is, you know, uh, most families, parents, adults uh, want to protect their family first and, and foremost from loss. So uh, that that would be the first reason, in uh, my opinion. Um, but when you delve a little deeper into really what's going on with your money, um, you know, most people don't like to lose money. And uh, I've lost a lot of money over the years. Um, I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money through different, you know, investments and, um, you know, recommendations. Uh, Let's just say uh, I've been a real estate investor for many years. And uh, being here on the Gulf Coast, we experienced lots of change, uh, you know, after Hurricane Katrina uh, especially. But even after that, with government involvement and, um, you know, whether it be from a tax perspective or, uh, just control perspective. So really uh, avoiding unnecessary wealth transfers is really um, the biggest um, you know, issue after that. And then thirdly, um, and, and those transfers could be you know, in the form of taxes or interest fees uh, that most people are transferring away unknowingly or unnecessarily. So uh, what we do is just kind of shine a light on that. And um, Probably the third reason is just to uh, increase uh, uh, cash flow, you know, whether it be just having access to capital um, that can be used uh, for many reasons, but, uh, but just access to cash flow. Um, you know, a lot of people are saving money, uh, you know, for good reason, but uh, unfortunately they're doing it the wrong way, so they don't really have access to the capital, the money that they're saving. And uh, so, in turn, they uh, they oftentimes, um, you know, have debt as well. And so, um, you know, this is a way to more or less eliminate um, public debt or debt to, you know, the financial institutions and, um, you know, keep the money in, in their control uh, with the accessibility. Yeah, that liquidity and control is very important. Call me, 202-SAGE. That's 202-7243. You can learn a little bit more about what Barry and I are talking about. You can send me an email. Go to the website, sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, sagemoneyradio.com. You can send me an email from there. Barry, how does um, how does this private banking, I guess if you could see me, I'd be doing a little quote sign, private banking. How does the private banking work? Well, that's a good question, uh, and um, you know, there's been many names uh, that have more or less been coined uh, after the original um, naming of this concept. Uh, it was originally coined the infinite banking concept by Nelson Nash, um, something that, that um, he was actually in, in prayer over because he found himself in a uh, you know, kind of a bad situation, owing the banks a lot of money during the 80s. Uh, when interest rates went up um, sky high and, you know, found himself paying, you know, 20, 21 percent uh, interest on, um, you know, lots of uh, real estate. So he came up with this concept through prayer, He's um, and uh, it's called the infinite banking concept. But, again, it's been, you know, coined many different things, private banking, family banking, uh, private reserve. Uh, the banks don't necessarily like the term infinite banking or um, – you know they don't they don't like uh, anyone other than themselves using the word banking. Right. So um, it's been renamed. But uh, how does it work? Or, or you know, 
basically we use a financial tool uh, called Whole Life Insurance. It's participating dividend paying whole life insurance from a mutual company. Now, this is much different than the insurance you're going to buy off the street or you hear advertised on the radio uh, for cheap uh, term insurance. It's completely the opposite. So it takes a paradigm shift in thinking. It's really a different way of thinking. Uh, but ironically, uh, the very people that, uh, you know, uh, warn you against, uh, you know, life insurance are the ones that own the most of it. Um, they just keep it a secret. And uh, it is, uh, you know, unfortunately been uh, kept from the, the public. But that is the tool we use. It's not necessary, uh, necessarily because of the product itself. It's because it just happens to be a reliable vehicle that's not based on uh, the market or any other outside economic forces. It's based on mortality and um you know, as people live longer, it actually gets better. But it's engineered to get better every year, and uh, it just happens to provide the functions of a bank. And uh, so people can use it uh, to create their own private banking system and then, um, you know, for income uh, purposes later and then also as a legacy for their family because, it, um, you know, its original intention was to be to uh, provide and uh, leave for the family. And we've just, um, you know, Nelson uh, discovered uh, how we can use it in our own lives for financing our major purchases. So how are some of these companies we're talking about that pay dividends, how are the dividends paid? Well, that's a great question. Um, dividends are paid uh, on surpluses. And... Um, the actuaries actually uh, determine the dividends on an annual basis. And uh, the good thing about um, uh, these policies or these dividends is that um, they are engineered that way. So they start with a million lives, and um, you know the, they study these numbers, uh, and they determine the rates. And uh, they always build in, um, you know, more or less what we uh, kind of refer to as a fudge factor there. So um, uh, there is some extra. And then, um, you know, it's uh, again, it's not based on the markets or anything like that. People uh, are still being born and people are still dying. And so it's really just based on mortality. And then how we treat the contract uh, can actually um, – allow these dividends to uh, to grow even more and that's where you know we come in uh, to help people design a custom uh, you know plan for their self that that will in turn um, you know get them to earning dividends sooner and uh, allow them to use these uh, for many reasons call me 202 sage that's 202 7243 the website is sagemoneyradio.com that's s a g e sagemoneyradio.com you can send me an email from there barry what is you know you and i are, are affiliated with this group and one of the main punch lines that we use is where your money is held is more important than what it can earn and man it's such a great you know i just such a great power phrase what Explain to our listeners in the greater Baton Rouge area what we mean when we say where your money is held is more important than what it can earn. Well, um, yeah, that uh, well, the first thing um, that I uh, I learned from Nelson about 13 years ago was um, you know mer where your money resides uh, is is totally up to you. But that's really the bottom line. So we want to be in control of our money. And when our money resides in a traditional bank, they are in complete control. They might pay you uh, a small portion of rent, um, but they are in control of that money, so they in turn loan it out to others. That's how banks make money. There's nothing wrong with that. That's capitalism. But uh, when we can control that mechanism, then um, – you know, we have much more control over it. Now, taking that a step further to kind of go along with the, the phrase that, that you're using there, most people these days think that uh, we have to invest our money in the market if we want our money to work for us. Well, Barry, they're, they're chasing high rates of returns, what they're doing. They want yeah. that high rate of return. 
Which look, we all, we all, yes, and we all look. We're not saying that the rate of return is not important. We're just saying that where your money's held is more important than that. Absolutely, because uh, you know if 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 you're okay with risk, and typically as you're younger, uh, you know we we tend to take more risk. But as you get older, and maybe you've lost some money, uh, that's not as exciting anymore. So we believe in a, a, a safe place uh, for our money to reside and a place that gives us access to the capital should we need it or, or want to use it for, for other reasons, whether it be, you know, perhaps you do want to invest in the market, but if you could put it in a safe place first, which is what we advocate, and then you could take out profits or dividends to then invest, then you're going to be a much in a much better position should uh, there be a loss and you will not be uh you know dependent on uh on that because uh you've you've still got your principal uh in a safe place. Right. With us on the phone we have Mr. Barry Page from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Barry's a graduate of William Carey College. Barry's also a member of the First Baptist Church of Ocean Springs and I met Barry um probably about a year ago it seems like and we have a lot in common and Barry uh provides an alternative approach to traditional financial planning, as do I. And you know, one of the things we're talking about is as a tool, as a vehicle, and uh, you know, we basically teach the difference between math and wealth. And we talk about your exit strategy and uh, getting money off the radar screen of the IRS. That's such a strong phrase. People are like, "Well, Hollis, is that legal?" Well, sure, it's legal. I mean, I'm not going to do anything that is illegal. I may speed a little bit on the interstate, you know, but uh, I do come in that complete stop at the stop sign. So obviously, when it comes to your money, we're not going to do anything that is illegal, but getting your money off the radar screen of the IRS. So, Barry, as far as retirement, how can you find – I mean, if someone's thinking, well, Hollis, what do you – how can I finance my retirement? What? How do we answer that question? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, you mentioned the word finance there, and that's uh, that uh, goes right along with um, you know the whole tax code and uh, how you can get off the screen of the IRS because uh, loans um, are not taxable, and so what we do is build a capital pool, uh, a place that we have stored our money and um, it has grown over time, and uh, over time uh, again these dividends are paid. And so there's a couple different ways to access the money. You can take the dividends uh, as cash, or you could continue to have them reinvested uh, into this system that we create. Um, and by doing that, when you take loans, uh, at that point, uh, the dividends outperform uh, the loan uh, interest. And um, the good thing about the loan interest, if you did want to pay the loan interest, that goes back uh, into the pool of capital that you would have access to, uh, as we do. But, uh, again, the financing is what makes it an untaxable event. So just like when you go uh, and take a car loan, you don't pay taxes necessarily on the loan. You pay taxes on the vehicle you purchase uh, when you take a mortgage, uh, again, you don't pay taxes on the mortgage itself. You might pay property taxes or you know other types of taxes, but you do not pay taxes on the loan. So that's how you would finance this, and that's you know just one of the strategies that that we employ, and uh, uh, and what makes it um, you know tax free or tax exempt, um, you know from uh, income tax uh, regulation, and uh, so this uh, in turn can basically in many circumstances double the amount of net income that you would have during retirement and so um, typically compared to other financial instruments um, you're going to have a much better lifestyle it's also uh, can help combat inflation but uh, definitely the the financing um, retirement is a great thing and, and you actually finance against the death benefit so as the death benefit is growing it's guaranteed it's engineered to grow every year as a matter of fact uh, according to the tax code it has to do this so uh, as it grows uh, so does um, uh, you know our income over time or can over time and uh, we can enjoy a much uh, uh, better lifestyle during retirement give me a call 202 sage that's 202 202- 7243. Send me an email. Go to the website, sagemoneyradio.com. That's S A G E, sagemoneyradio.com.
radio.com. You can shoot me an email from there. We have Mr. Barry Page on the phone with us from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. And Barry, you and I, I think we had the conversations, like I said earlier, with uh, people in their retirement that they're not going to have with their traditional Wall Street financial advisor because our conversations talk about distribution. And, you know, I've been asking that question a lot lately. No one has had that conversation with their with their traditional advisor, the distribution phase of taking your money out. And it's all about the accumulation. So on the distribution side, you know, there's taxes and we got about four minutes to end this first segment. So what about taxes, Barry, in retirement? Well, taxes will be the largest transfer of our wealth over our lifetime. And so anytime we can minimize um, that tax effect on our income, uh, the better position we're going to be in. You know, we pay income taxes all our lives, and we believe in paying our fair share of taxes, but paying them one time. And so uh, with traditional accumulation strategies, um, you know, people leave uh, typically at retirement their money in these accounts, or sometimes they might you know, take it out in other ways, but they continue uh, to pay taxes on the money and on the income. So when you can redirect uh, this uh, accumulated money into an account that uh, can become tax-free uh, and tax-exempt for income tax purposes, you're going to be in a much greater position. So uh, a fatal error, you know, in thinking is that, um, you know, we're going to pay uh, less taxes by deferring the taxes, and uh, this couldn't be further from the truth. It is, man, and, and you know, I've, I've met, I met somebody a couple of weeks ago, and, man, they were, um, they were loaded up on some Roth IRAs, and, of course, you know, through education and us learning this, what we're doing is – uh, of course, Mr. Roth, I think Senator Roth, wasn't he from Kansas or Oklahoma? I mean, the guy that started the Roth IRA, right. all he did was go to the tax code and take out five or six things from the tax code to put in the Roth IRA, and that's what we're dealing with. And so um, if this is something that you are interested in, give me a call, 202-SAGE. That's 202-7243. The website is sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, Sage Money radio.com you can send me an email from there uh you know the capital gains tax rates have changed 18 times in the last 50 years and of course barry the, the, that question that we usually ask someone hey you know do you think income taxes are going to be or do you think taxes in general are going to be higher or lower in the future uh barry we got about two minutes left for you to answer that <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually looking at the history of uh, income taxes in our country. The income tax was, uh, as we know it today, was created in 1913. Now, ironically, uh, that's the same year that the Federal Reserve was created. <laughs> yeah, ironically. Well, right there, that should uh, raise a red flag to you. But if you look at the history of taxes over that time, and you bring up the, uh, the tax brackets, um, this is something that we have no control over. The IRS completely controls this. And when you ask people, you know, when I ask people, which we do on a daily basis, do you think taxes are going up or down, the general consensus is they're going up. But uh, if you just look at, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't take our word for it or just, what, you know, what you think is going on, maybe, you know, because we just had an election, um, you can just uh, listen to a man named David Walker. He was a comptroller general of the United States under Bush II and under uh, Clinton. And uh, he says the current fiscal policy is unsustainable. And Barry, hold, to hold, hold, hold that. We're, we're going to talk about the future when we come back. We're coming up on a hard break. Uh, we, we have Mr. Barry Page on the phone with us from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Call me, 202-SAGE. It's 202-7243. Send me an email. Go to the website, sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, sagemoneyradio.com. You can shoot me an email from there. Stay tuned for the second segment of the show. You've been listening to Sage Money Radio on AM 1150 and 97.7 FM WJBO. I live back in the woods, you see. A woman and the kids and the dogs and me. I got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive. Now, more of Sage.
Exchange Money Radio with Hollis Day Jr., where investments have a clear exit strategy on WJBO News Radio. If you have a question for Hollis Day Jr., call 202 SAGE. That's 202 7243. Now, Hollis Day Jr. The interest is up and the stock market is down. Actually, it's just the opposite right now. When old Hank made that song back in the 80s, it was high interest. Now, I would like to live back in the woods with the woman and the kids. <laughs> Get off the grid a little bit. But, you know, that's the whole fundamental point, part of the stock market, right? Buy low, sell high. But it's a game. It's a game that the common folks don't have access to. And, uh, you know, we're, we have on the phone with us Barry Page from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. This is Hollis coming from the fifth floor of this building right here off of Corporate Boulevard on this beautiful Saturday. And I know Barry is close to some casinos. And there's three casinos uh, very close to us right here on the Mississippi River. And, you know, that is a voluntary tax that people pay. When you go on there, those beautiful big million-dollar boats are not there to just give away money. They basically take it and re- they take money from a lot of people and then they give it to that, you know, one or two people that hit it big. And I think that's very similar to the stock market. And so Barry and I do things a little bit differently. We challenge, we challenge the way the, the, the administration, which means the government, in the way they tax us. And it's robbery. It is absolutely robbery. And Barry, I'll tell you, just you know, to get in, I was I had a, a meeting yesterday morning and I was sharing with a guy my parents my both of my parents uh put in a social security and Medicare their whole lives. Right. My mom was a registered nurse. Uh I can remember her working twelve, sixteen hour shifts. My dad owned a tire business that eventually he had to shut down because Walmart and Sam's he just couldn't beat their prices. Middle class I mean the tip we were the typical middle class family. My mother came down with ovarian cancer and died like two months before, three months before she would have been able to draw Social Security disability. My mother died at 54 years old, never received a penny from Social Security and Medicare that she put in her whole life. Never received a penny. My dad died very unexpectedly at 64 on Thanksgiving Day of 07. I just took him to the Social Security office in October of 07 because he was going to turn 65 in March of 08. So about four or five months before he turned 65, my dad died very unexpectedly of a pulmonary embolism. My dad, Barry, my dad never collected a dime from Medicare or Social Security. And the government sticks it to, the government basically gives us the middle finger every time that we have to make a contribution to Medicare or Social Security. The government's basically saying, you know what, Barry, you know what, Hollis, we don't think you're, we think we're better at managing your money than you are. Oh, by the way, we're going to make the rules of this, even though we don't have to participate in it. Just like Obamacare, Social Security. I get so mad because we have these idiots in D.C. making the rules, telling us what we have to do, but yet they don't have to do it. Right. It's 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 robbery. So, you know, right? we ended the first segment talking about taxes, and, and I'm really just uh, consumed with the tax code. Uh, so you, you had that chart right there in front of you talking about the tax yeah, code since so, 1913. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, to kind of... Um, segue on your thoughts about Social Security and Medicare, you know, these programs are our largest expenses in our country. And they were created by politicians. They were created by politicians to get reelected. Social Security was created in 1935 by FDR and Medicare in 1965 by LBJ. Together, they are our largest expenses in our country. That's where we spend the most money. And the, uh, unfortunately, the unfunded liability uh, for those is about $15 trillion. That's money that's owed already to baby boomers and people that will collect Social Security. Uh, and Medicare, it's about $27 trillion. And, you know, we throw millions and billions around like they're nothing, but you start talking about a trillion, you're talking about some serious money there. But um, back to the taxes thing, see, the, the what most people don't quite understand until I actually show them these numbers is that we are overspending. See, we're overspending for Medicare, for Social Security, for Medicare Part D, because these are promises, these are Ponzi schemes that were created 
by politicians to get reelected. And a gentleman by the name of David Walker, who was the accountant for the United States for many years uh, under uh, presidencies of Republicans and Democrats, he's now blowing the whistle on the government. And here's what he says. He says the current fiscal policy is unsustainable. We're heading to a future where we'll have to double federal taxes or cut federal spending by 60%. Now, which do you think is more likely, cutting spending or doubling taxes? These guys in, in Washington haven't cut spending in years, more than maybe 1% at a time. He says 60% are double the taxes. And when you just look at the history of taxes over time, we're actually at about the lowest that it's been in history. The average since it was created in 1913 is right at 60%, 58.9%, where, uh, and that's the highest marginal bracket, whereas today the highest marginal bracket is 39%, roughly 40% of income taxes. So you just have to ask yourself, uh, you know, what are taxes going to do in the future, and do you want to stay uh, in this system where the government is in control. They can change that lever. They can raise taxes at any time. And unfortunately, most people have all of their savings yes. tied up in government qualified plans. So that means that they have no idea of the tax liability that they will have in the future. So uh, ever decreasing income, possibly if they want to live anywhere near the lifestyle that they're living today. If you want to see how to get some of your wealth off the radar screen of the IRS, call me, 202-SAGE. That's 202-7243. Send me an email. Go to the website, sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, sagemoneyradio.com. Barry, so you know we talked about the instrument, but one of the first questions that people talk about, they want to know, what's the risk? Is it safe? How do you answer that? Well, that's a great question. Uh, the risk is minimal because this is something that we should be doing already, and that is, one, protecting our family. So, you know, without it, there's the risk, right? And then secondly, uh, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, these policies, these plans uh, can be custom built, you know, the way you want them and for, you know, your particular circumstance. Everybody's different, but uh, it's based on mortality, so there are no uh, outside influences of the markets to worry about, and that's why they're so safe. They're engineered to get better every year. And uh, to kind of tag along with uh, the taxes and uh, how life insurance works, if you just want to Google that person I, I mentioned earlier, David Walker, or this gentleman here, his name is Ed Slott. He's an IRA, he's a CPA, he's an IRA and tax expert. Here's what he says about life insurance. He says the tax exemption for life insurance is the single biggest benefit in the tax code. So uh, think about that for a minute, the single biggest benefit in the tax code. It's nothing new. It's been around for hundreds of years. It's, uh, as a matter of fact, life insurance has been around much longer than the tax code itself. It's the way wealthy have created wealth and how they hold on to it, how they keep it in the family. You know, when uh, whenever we die, our money is going to be transferred away, typically either to taxes, to the hospitals, to the attorneys, and this is a way that we can keep the money in the family and do it 100% uh, above ground. And uh, and you know, you mentioned safety. This is uh, probably the safest place you could store your money. Your money has to reside somewhere, and what better place to do it uh, than through a life insurance contract where you remain in control. Absolutely. Call me, 202-SAGE. That's 202-7243. Visit the website, sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, sagemoneyradio.com. You can send me an email from there. Uh, you know, the the entire system is broken, and Barry and I, we have access, we have access to the solution. And, you know, taxes are the greatest impediment to wealth accumulation and financial planning. And basically what Barry's point is, mine too, is control the controllables. You cannot control the tax rate. You can only control how much you put into the system. So whenever I tell somebody, hey, look, I can't lower the tax bracket, but I can help get your wealth off the radar of the IRS. I can help you chase returns, or I can show you what you've been losing. That's pretty powerful right there, Barry. I can help you chase, Absolutely. I can help Absolutely. You, I can help you chase those returns, or I can show you 
what you've been losing. Right, and and that's really our focus, Hollis, is defense. You know, we we want to show people how to eliminate or minimize wealth transfers. Uh, you know, we just had a Super Bowl, and everybody wants to look at Tom Brady. Yeah, he's a great quarterback, but uh, if you look at that New England Patriots team, or if you look at any of the teams, you look at Denver last year, you look at the Steelers, you look at these teams, they were built on defense, right? Defense wins the Super Bowls, you know, the, the offense uh, sells the tickets. And uh, so, again, people get real excited about the market, and you can make money in the market, no doubt. But if you don't like to lose money, uh, you know, these strategies that we employ uh, can make sure that you are protected. Um, and just kind of, uh, you know, on another note here, I was just looking uh, at some numbers this morning. The crisis that we were in in 2000, 2009, you know, we're very near those same levels again in many ways. The market, uh, many think, is overpriced. Yes, at all-time highs, but unfortunately, you know, that's not when you buy. That's when you sell. Right. So there is an opportunity now, you know, if you follow that whole train of thought, buy low, sell high. Well, the market is at all-time highs, so if you want to sell, now would be a good time. But um, looking at what's going on, really, we've got an auto bubble loan bust, and this is one of the major ways that people transfer away money is through loans and financing. The auto industry is now the subprime delinquencies are at their highest level since 2009. Um, also, uh, student loans, mortgage is are, uh, again, in delinquency status. So, um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball, but all I know is that, uh, again, delinquencies and uh, you know, the loan, uh, actually, the amount of money borrowed is at all-time highs right now. Absolutely. And if you want to uh, see what Barry and I are doing with our own money, call me, 202-SAGE. That's 202-7243. The website is sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, sagemoneyradio.com. You know, I'm convicted to show you what I'm doing with my own money. And Barry, talking about losses in the football, I, I, I use that correlation and that analogy all the time. Losses, you know, in, for, the turnovers in football are what keep you from winning, winning, making money. So if you can avoid the losses, and what people don't realize is, especially we, we have that chart, if someone's taking out money, uh, you know, if they reach retirement and they're taking and they're withdrawing their money, if they take their money out and the market has a bad year, it totally derails the whole plan, just just Absolutely. knocks it off the track and is absolutely uh, catastrophic. And I believe that 99% of financial advisors, uh, even the certified financial guys, they will keep you paying taxes all your life. Sure. And you know, and, and one of the things that, that, that I've learned is it's such a power. You know, why is it okay to think that 39% is okay to pay in a tax rate? That is, that is ludicrous. And I'm not talking about the singer. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right, Hollis. And, and, you know, these advisors, they make money whether the market goes up or down because that's what they're doing. They're getting paid a fee on managing your money. So uh, they don't really have any skin in the game. It's our money that's in the game. And, uh, you know, until you've really lost money, it's hard to have an appreciation for it. Uh, I've lost a lot of money over the years. I uh, I was a big uh, holder of uh, MCI WorldCom. Uh, oh, man. Uh, Right after college, I bought a lot of that stock, and I saw it go to zero. Uh, and so all of my money went down the drain. Uh, after that, I still invested in these qualified plans until I finally took my money out just before the, the crash. You know, uh, I still do have investments, but, um, you know, once you lose money, uh, you, you, you tend not to want to ever have that happen again. So uh, that's what we do is show people how to protect their money and, you um, you know, there's a there's a little phrase that that uh, that I usually ask people uh, when I when I get started to work with them, and that's if what you thought to be true about money turned out not to be true, when would you want to know? Yesterday. Absolutely. And so that's what we do is just shed some light on the truth and uh, you know history. Um, you know, so many of these uh, market projections are, you know, they're just based on the market continuing to go up and. Uh, you know, like you said, it, what happens if the market is down when you get ready to take your money? Um, you know, you, you've got the choice of either working longer and, and bearing it out. But, you know, it's always, oh, you're in it for the long haul. 
And uh, unfortunately, you don't have access to the money. So if you're trying to retire, if you need income from that source, uh, and you're you're you know that's during a time of a down market, then uh, it's hard to uh, to survive. Right, Barry. Look, thanks for being uh, on the show with us today. You have any any uh, word, any wise words of wisdom to our listeners in Baton Rouge and the Greater Baton Rouge area on this Saturday? Well, uh, you know, I guess I'll just just end with this: that um, you know, you have the opportunity to take control of your finances. Uh, you know, self-education is so important. Do some reading. Don't just listen to these personalities uh, that, that are telling you what to do, that have no licenses whatsoever, that are really, uh, you know, in my um, eyes, practicing uh, financial malpractice. <clears throat> they uh, Making, uh, uh, you know, suggestions on what you should do with your money. So educate yourself. There's a lot of good books out there on this. Uh, you know, primary, the one that I'm... Uh, mentioned today is Becoming Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. And if you want to get a hold of me, uh, you can uh, also order that book from my website, LegacyInsuranceAgency.com, LegacyInsuranceAgency.com. You'll find a wealth of information on there. There's free reports uh, to where you can learn more. But uh, I just recommend that everybody just do a little self-education, uh, get out a book and uh, and read it, some history, some real history, and understand that um, – you know, what we're telling you, um, you know, again, uh, it's been held secret uh, to the public, but this is what the banks are doing. The banks would never tell you, but they own more of this life insurance that we're talking to you about than anyone. As a matter of fact, they own billions of it. It's called Bank on Life Insurance. And uh, just do your research. You'll find out that, uh, you know, the largest banks in the world uh, own more of it than anyone. But, of course, they would never tell you about that because they'd rather you uh, invest your money uh, with them or store your money with them where they have complete control yeah, of it. So they, take control control of your finances. And Barry, right quick, a while ago you said trillion. I know this statistic, a trillion dollars. You're right. People, you know, it used to be when there were millions, oh, man, we're never going to get to a billion. Well, now it's trillions. I don't even know what comes after trillion. But Barry, a trillion dollars, one trillion. If I said, here, Barry, here's a trillion dollars, go spend it. Barry, you'd have to spend... Ten. Now wrap your head around this. To spend one trillion dollars, you would have to spend ten million dollars a day for two hundred and seventy-three years to spend one trillion. It's incredible. Yeah, when I make the uh, analogy to people, I usually tell them if I could count a million, or I'm sorry, a dollar per second, uh, how long would it take? And it would take thirty-two thousand years just to count to one trillion. So uh, our federal debt. Is about uh, close to twenty trillion right now. I'm looking at it right now, nineteen point nine seven six trillion dollars. It's gone up a billion dollars since yesterday. So uh, that number uh, is just amazing. We collect about three point three trillion in tax revenue every year. So you just have to ask yourself, where's that additional money going to come from? It's going to come from you and me, the U.S. taxpayer. So if we can minimize that tax burden. We can get off the radar screen by utilizing a financial instrument that's been around for hundreds of years that is safe, that is a great place to store your wealth and have access to it, then we're going to be way ahead of the ball game. Absolutely. Barry Page from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Uh, Barry, thanks for being on this show, and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks again. Thank you, Hollis, for having me. Okay, Hollis, man. Have a great day. Thank you. God bless. All right. Barry's a good guy right there. Man, he has a great story. Uh, Dad was in a wreck. His sister died in a car wreck. Uh, lives on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Great guy. He and I talk regularly, and um, we get together a couple times a year, some meetings, and we are hammering out, hammering out the tax code, the taxes. Tax, 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 tax. Right? We got to pay them. Got to pay them. You know, I like coaching you listeners in the greater Baton Rouge area on the tax code and wealth accumulation, but most importantly, wealth distribution. I personally believe in paying taxes on a dollar only one time. So I show people what I'm doing with my own money because I truly believe that where your money is located is more important than what it can earn. So the rate of return is important. 
I'm just saying that where it is located is more important. If I could show you where you have been unknowingly losing money every year using traditional planning, if I could show you cash flow distributions that are exempt, exempt, E-X-E-M-P-T, exempt from federal income taxes, would that be a conversation that you want to have? Call me 202-SAGE. That's 202 202- Seven two four three. The website is sagemoneyradio.com. That's S A G E sagemoneyradio.com. You can send me an email from there. You know, with your four hundred one k, your IRA, you are in a partnership with the federal government. I mean, I, I sound like I was from Mississippi when I said that partnership. So, like a three syllable word made it like eight. That's like my little ten, my twelve year old daughter. She says hotel. Instead of hotel. Uh, Social Security is bankrupt, people. Medicare is on life support. The IRA 401k is a government partnership plan. Do you really want to be in a partnership with the federal government? You know, how much of your 401k IRA is yours? You keep contributing to a vehicle that doesn't even know how much you owe. Does it bother you that you have an account that you don't even know how much you owe? It bothers me and I'm not you. See, I quit putting in the IRA years ago, and it's just funny how life circles back to this. I don't trust the government. I just don't trust the government enough for them to control my money when it comes to what the tax rate is going to be, the unknown tax rate in the future. And what I find is that most people are doing with their money the total opposite of what they believe. It's because we're like sheep, and it's the cool thing to do to to contribute to your company 401k because they're matching 3% or 5%. Look, I have something that will blow the doors off of the 401k. Blow the doors off. You know, I'm going to be the first person that's going to tell you you don't need more money. You can accomplish your goals with what you have. You know, who got you to think that a 39% tax rate is okay to pay? It's not. Again, where your money's held is more important than what it can earn. See, because the, t- the tax code states, the tax code of 1913, it states that you are only obligated, I say you, me, you, we are only obligated to pay an income tax one time as we earn it. All other forms of income taxes, dividends, capital gains, those are voluntary. Just like the voluntary tax, you go to the casino and pay when you lose money. It's voluntary. No one's forcing you to go to the casino and lose that money. You know, we're going we're gonna to show you the difference between math and wealth. You have to understand that the sequence of returns is a critical factor, crucial factor in determining a safe withdrawal rate. It has little impact on the accumulation side. You know, so what is your exit strategy? Has your planner shared with you the five parts of the IRS tax code that refers to exempt income, as in no taxes are due? You know, this is the most important conversation about your wealth that you will have. Are you serious about your money? What are you doing with your money right now? Do you truly believe in the market? Do you really think the market's not going to have another correction? I mean, do you think that? I know it's high right now. And it may be next month or five years, but it's going to go down again. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just going on history. You know, nothing changes if nothing changes. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Look, you can retire on a third of what you think you need or three times what you think you need. It doesn't matter because both will work. Which is easier? Which one's easier? Call me, 202-SAGE. That's 202-7243. I don't focus on income. I focus on the taxation of income. Send me an email. Go to the website, sagemoneyradio.com. That's S-A-G-E, sagemoneyradio.com. I hope the rest of your Saturday is fantastic. Uh, You've been listening to Sage Money Radio on WJBO 1150 AM and 97.7 FM. God bless you. God bless the USA.